Morgan, uh, this is much different than the episode shortly after Christmas mm -hmm. when he had complications and wound up in Walter Reed, and nobody knew where he was. This is different. It is different, um, but we are seeing within, you know, just weeks of each other, uh, of each hospitalization, that he has had to turn power over to his deputy twice. Now, a couple things to remember about Lloyd Austin. He is the longest serving defense, uh, confirmed defense secretary in the past 10 years. So he has been in the seat for, for a number of years. He's outlasted a lot of, uh, you know, the previous nine sec defs. So while that's positive, at some point, if you're getting repeatedly hospitalized, you have to remember that having a cabinet position, especially one that's in the nuclear chain of command, it's not a right. It's a privilege. And so this is only something he and the president uh, can answer. But I do think that from a national security perspective, when you have the press conference that you had Thursday night from the president, and then whenever you have your secretary of defense hospitalized for a second time, within a matter of days, our enemies are looking at our national security chain not being as robust as they should be, either mentally or physically, and I think that is the concerning part for me from a national security perspective, Steve. Well, unlike the first time, apparently now the chain of command has been, you know, he's notified his deputy, okay, you're in charge yeah. while I'm going to be at Walter Reed. Uh, Nicole Sapphire, D Dr. Nicole Sapphire was on uh, the Big Weekend yeah. show uh, yesterday and talked a little bit about the complications, what could be happening right now. Watch this. We're seven weeks after his surgery. And one of the most common things that we do see in post prostatectomy patients, in about 30 to 50% of times, you can have um, incontinence. Usually you're not admitted for something like an inc incontinence. So my, my thoughts are maybe he has an infection as another complication. Maybe he needs to be inpatient to receive some IV antibiotics. I'm certain that they're going to probably be doing a CT scan. It does seem that he, as I said, is having a very complicated course. Yeah, that's the understatement. It does seem very complicated. I'm sure he's getting very good care. And neither one of us are doctors, so uh, let's wish him the very best. Yeah. Meanwhile, let's go for a moment to what Trey Yinks was reporting from Tel Aviv a moment ago, and that is that apparently two Israeli hostages have been freed by, uh, freed by the Israelis. They were held by Hamas, apparently upstairs at somebody's uh, residential home, but there's still 134 held somewhere in Gaza by Hamas. Uh, yes, at least. And among those, by the way, at least six Americans. Uh, we did have more Americans that were held captive by this terrorist group. But, Steve, unfortunately, two have died in captivity um, in, the, in the past few weeks. If you look just at this operation, this sort of thing, Steve, takes uh, takes weeks, takes could be you know months, depending on what the operation yeah. is. It takes a long time to plan. So this is thorough, is incredibly impressive uh, by the IDF. And this is the kind of thing that a government should be doing when their citizens are held hostage. And right. that's why I think we have to use this opportunity to be grateful that we have the hostages back, but we must continue to put pressure right. and call on this administration to also get the Americans home. We still have six Americans indeed. held hostage by a terror group, and it's unacceptable. It is indeed. All right. Um, Morgan, thank you very much for joining us today.